This program is brought to you by Kvarnet, Teledyne Oil & Gas, EMAS, Control Cutter, and IV Offshore. We're very lucky today to be joined by Maria Vanderhoven, head of the International Energy Agency. Now, in your speech, you talked a little bit about supply and demand, and, and can you tell us how uh, supply and demand may balance out given so much geopolitical uncertainty in major producing oil regions right now? Yes, what we can see at this moment is that there is quite a turmoil in, uh, in, uh, in the Middle East, and parts mm -hmm. of the Middle East, especially in Iraq, and that is concerning, of course, because when you look at the future supply, o OPEC relies on Iraq because that's the major uh, new supplying that might come to the market. On the other hand, we can see a lot of non-OPEC supply coming to the market, especially the, uh, from, the, from the United States and from, from Canada, mm -hmm. and also from other non-OPEC parts of the world. So there is a balance in supply and demand, and that is also underlined by the fact that although there is this turmoil in, in the Middle East, that until now, not one barrel less of oil has come to the market. So the supplies are okay. What happens in the future, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But those supplies, uh, those additional incremental supplies are in large part underpinned by unconventional resources yes. from the U.S. Uh, given the necessity to keep drilling and drilling and drilling to keep those supplies up, uh, how reliable is shale and tide yeah. oil um, in the world uh, energy supply? The point is that when you look into the situation in the United States, it's extremely favorable. There is good geology there is a favorable policy framework and there is a very, very mature and well-established oil and gas industry. So these are three critical conditions to have something like the, U the, the US shale boom in other, in other parts of the world. Mm -hmm. So it's, it, in our view, it's very difficult to copy and paste it. That's one thing. The other thing is, how sustainable is it? Because you need a lot of, of wells to be drilled. Well, of course, I think it's important that technology moves on so that you can get more of it. And that's what we can see in the United States as well. Technology and research and development is not at a standstill. It moves on. And I think that is important for the world to realize as well. My third point is, there is a lot of unconventional, but it's not always easy to exploit. <laughs> And so the theme of the conference is, is change and the oil industry is obviously uh, always changing. Yes. But what are some of the changes that you're looking at, say, in the next five years down the road? Is it the expansion of shale or are there other factors on the horizon that we should be keeping an eye on? The expansion of shale is one of them, but there are two others I would like to mention, although they have, they have more to do with geographical issues. At this moment, we see a lot of energy demand, growth in energy demand in, the, in Asian countries, Asian tigers. China leads the pack, and then it's India, and then it's the other South Asia, Southeast Asian countries. But what we can see at this moment is that a lot is going on in Sub-Saharan Africa. So I would, I would like to, to emphasize that keeping an eye on Sub-Saharan Africa, what's going on there, is very important. And the other thing is, of course, South America, where a lot of new developments are taking place in, uh, in deep sea in exploitation, etc. Et, et and the same goes, and that's my third point, for the Arctic uh, development. And of course, in the Arctic development and in deep sea, we have some environmental concerns. Let's not forget about that. So the whole world is watching how that's going. So I really do emphasize that our industry works as best as they can because that is the best guarantee for a future guarantee of supply. And I do, if, if I may ask you one more question, um, Mr. Musk uh, compared oil, the oil industry, oil usage to uh, a room running out of oxygen. Um, could you respond to that? Uh, is is a, a, a non-renewable resource uh, ultimately doomed to fail? What I would like to mention is two things. First of all, um, we have been talking about oil and gas, but let's not forget about coal. The big black elephant in the room is coal. Mm -hmm. And the world is in for coal for many, many decades to come. And it would be very good to do something about that. And then gas is an alternative to coal because it's a cleaner fossil fuel. It's the cleanest fossil fuel we have. Nevertheless, if you really want to meet the energy demand growth of the world, for a length of time, we need renewables. That's out of the question. We need renewables and we need as much of them as we can at a low price. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you very much. Thank you.